Good evening and welcome to the program. My name is Dungu and tonight on Health Corner we are going to be discussing another interesting topic. With me I have uh, Dr. Ogwang uh, who was with us some time back and he has come to continue educating us on how we can use um, simple remedies for simple medical conditions that are rather common with us. It's going to be a discussion where we would like to involve each of you to be part of this. Very soon we'll let you know about our Facebook page and the phone line that you'll use to reach to us to ask those questions that you have for the expert. And I'll ask him to introduce himself. But as you know, he's Dr. Uh, uh, Ogwang Patrick, but you can tell us more again for people to really get to know you more. Yeah, um, in addition to being called Dr. Gwang Patrick, my role is I'm a pharmacist mm. and I lecture at Mbara University of Science and Technology. Mm. And my focus is pharmacy and pharmacology, especially herbal medicines or natural medicines. Your focus is on herbal medicines or natural yes. I see you have a placard here, Dr. Gwang. I, I can't fail to get attracted to that. What is that? Yeah, this is the award I received from the Minister of Health last year, mm. recognizing my effort to research and develop a herbal prevention of malaria. So I'm Outstanding grateful. achievement. Yeah. Wow. Given to me by means of health. So which means actually that the kind of work you do is recognized by the ministry. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I've noticed that uh, you are one of the awardees for the president's, how do you call that? Presidential support scientist. Mm. Yes, I, I, I won a, a grant from National Council of Science and Technology okay. in 2008 to research and develop a medicine that can be used to prevent malaria. Mm. And uh, this award is an offshoot of that uh, grant that I received. We did great work with other scientists. I was not alone. Okay. I was the leader. You were the leader. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we produced that herbal medicine called Atavo, which many Ugandans are benefiting from. And I want to encourage Ugandans to take this so we can do it with malaria okay. in our society. Again, to remind us about that Atavo, you, you say it's a medicine that is um, naturally happening. Yes. But just remind us, because I know we talked about it the other time, but we, we need to get to know more about it. You can put back the placard, yes. Yeah, so this medicine, Atavo, as I explained last time, we all know malaria is a big problem in our country, and we cannot wait to fall sick and then look for treatment. The best way is to prevent it. Yeah. We do have nets, but we go into bed late in the night, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., when mosquitoes have already beaten us, so we still have a risk of getting malaria. But when we add this atavo, uh, the protection is increased. The chance of getting malaria comes almost to 0%. And I want to, to thank again government for supporting National Council of Science and Technology and putting money to support scientists in that institution. I pray that they put in more money to support mm -hmm. more scientists. I know the annual conference for the Ghana National Council for Science and Technology is mm. about to happen. I think in, usually it happens in July. Mm. Are you going to be talking about this or you've already talked about it? They know a lot about this, but if given a chance to talk again, you I will talk, talk again, yes. Dr. Lot. Gwang, usually these discoveries go through phases yes. of uh, research to ensure that they're safe for human consumption. Mm. Remind us again, yeah, should so we stay confident that actually we've gone through those phases? Yeah, so Atavo is one of the few uh, natural medicines in this country, maybe also in the world, that actually has gone through the proper channels of testing, beginning with the laboratory rats, or what we call guinea pigs, moving on to clinical trials in human beings and applying for certification by the National Drug Authority. So we have taken it through that entire chain and we are very confident that Atavo is very safe, partly because all the ingredients in it mm -hmm. are used as foods. Just that we have improved it to become a medicine. It contains avocado seed part which is eaten in some parts of this country. Mm. It contains lemongrass oil, 
oh, I think Bugana is called Chisubi. Yes, Chisubi. That oil is what we add here. And then and others call it Omteta, I think. Omteta, yes. yes. And then it contains Artemisia annua, which actually Chinese add to their food. Even in Europe, it's, it's called sweet wormwood. It's added to food. So we have modernized it mm -hmm. to come up with a medicine. As you know, food can be a medicine, mm -hmm. depending on how you, you, you use it. Yeah. So this medicine is very safe. And at first, we developed the Atavo, which is the plain one, focusing on malaria. But now we have realized that it has other properties. And we have improved it to be called Atavo Plus. The public doesn't know about this. But soon you'll get to know about Atavo Plus, which has other added benefits, especially for people who are above 40 years old. If you take this daily in tea, you have less risk of developing complications which are due to oxidation of fatty acids in the body. Have you done studies on that as well? Yes. It has very good free radical scavenging effects. You know, free radicals are like oxygen radicals that actually damage our, our body cells and tissues. Mm -hmm. So we did the, we call it the MTT test, which measures the ability of a substance to scavenge those free radicals. We did that study and found it to be very, very effective for okay. that, yeah. Do Dr. Guang, uh, as you may know, there are many people who are called Dungu Risa Harbour Research Center mm -hmm. or Guang Harbour Research Center. Mm -hmm. And some people have developed uh, maybe an understanding that maybe they may not be genuine. Are you part of the Harbour Research Centers or for you, you do hubs in a different way? Yeah, I know that there are many people who put right there. There are so many. Yeah. Harbour Research, Harbour Research. Yeah, but we must understand that People understand research in different ways, but as scientists, we know there are procedures mm. to call something a research. Uh, some places are just attracting clients to come to their clinic and they treat them. That's not research. Uh, research means you are looking for something unknown and you cannot begin uh, giving to people before you confirm it. Mm. And all researches must be registered in this country. My research, which I do, is registered with the university and also registered the National Council of Science and Technology. When I was at Natural Chemical Therapeutics, where I did most of the research for 10 years, it was properly organized and approved research. So the public needs to be aware that the small clinics along the roadsides saying they're doing research are not actually doing research. And if you go there, you may be at risk. Uh, but yes, there are some herbalists who have good knowledge but I think the Ministry of Health is coming up with a law to register them. Say so that when you walk in, you can see a, uh, a license. If you walk into my pharmacy, you see Ogwang Patrick license to practice okay. pharmacy. Okay. So we also look forward to the government providing licenses to all the herbalists and traditional healers in this country to know who is genuine mm. and who is fake. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for that background clarification. Uh, I know when we did the other program, people were saying, but is he a real uh, pharmacist, scientist? Mm. Now you've explained it all <laughs> to, to the people. Mm. Um, going back to our usual condition, there are lots of ailments mm. that many of us get w when we're at home. I don't know if there are some medicines that are locally available that you might recommend to many of us who get simple ailments at home mm. that we could use. Do you have anything like that? Yes, uh, first is tea leaves. In science, it's called Camellia sinensis. Amajani. Amajani. Mm -hmm. Now, tea leaves has four medicinal components. Mm. The first one we, is called theophylline. Mm -hmm. Theophylline is what actually is used to make aminophylline, mm -hmm. which you know is a medicine for treating yeah, asthma. No. Okay, it's a but medicine for asthma. Uh, yes, but mm. it is a, the, the active compound theophylline is actually in tea leaves. So for people who are asthmatic, especially on during cold season, you can take as much tea as possible because you are able to get the theophylline although it's not well absorbed, well released into water, you know, it's less water soluble, mm -hmm. but at least the sum of it that you get when you, you take it in tea form. And especially if you prepare it in milk, because milk has some bit of fat mm -hmm. in it, which helps in it, uh, um, 
uh, in extraction of the theophylline component of the tea leaves. Apart from asthmatics benefiting, diarrhea is still killing many children in this country. Mm -hmm. And even adults suffer from diarrhea. But tea leaves is very good medicine for diarrhea. Mm. Why? Because it contains two groups of compounds. One are called tannins. Tannins are compounds that uh, if, you, if you pour milk in tea leaves, you will see something like clots forming. Mm. Now that is tannins reacting with the proteins. So if you prepare tea leaves in, in water, hot water, and you drink it, if there's any bacteria or an infection in your stomach, mm. it will capture them. The tannins. The tannins mm -hmm. will bind them. Mm. And then secondly, it has a compound called theobromine. Theobromine is an oil. Which I is can assure you by the end of this, We'll be knowing nothing but continue. <laughs> <laughs> you said it's the what? Theobromine. Theobromine. Yes, it's an oil in the tea leaf. Mm. But it helps to slow down the movement of the intestines. So somebody who's having diarrhea benefits one, if there are any toxins or bacteria, it will be captured by the tannins. Secondly, the theobromine will slow down the move. So you, the diarrhea does not you don't diarrhea frequently. Mm. In fact, if you take if you get diarrhea and you take tea leaves, you will not take it more than twice and the diarrhea will what? will stop. So people outside there, instead of rushing for antibiotics or taking drugs like loperamide, which can actually cause other adverse effects, complications, mm. you can prepare tea leaves. For example, a teaspoon of tea leaves in a cup of tea, about 200 mils, and you drink all of it, you even chew those leaves. Mm. I can assure you, diarrhea will stop. There, there are many times when actually they tell us, drink tea. Mm if you have abdominal discomfort. Mm. But they also tell us to add mujaja. I don't know what mujaja is in your language. Mujaja in it's my language. flavor that we yeah. use. In, in, in scientific language, it's called osmam suave. Osmam suave, suave yes. Mm -hmm. In my language, we call it emopim. Mm. Mm -hmm. Emopim. Yes, mujaja is very good for stomach ailments. Number one is that if you have acidity problem, maybe peptic ulcers, it, it improves the bicarbonate level. Bicarbonate levels improve the, the, they raise the pH, the acidity, mm. and therefore reduce the effect of acid in the stomach. But secondly, Mujaya has oil. We call it essential oil. That oil there helps to blot out any gas. Sometimes you get pain or, or discount because of excess gas. Mm. So Mujaya has that oil. So actually Mujaya is a very good medicine for stomach ailments, okay. yeah, as you have said. Are there any other uh, the other medicine of taking tea, or oh, tea is finished. Uh, tea leaves. So I've talked about diarrhea. I've talked, talked about asthma. About asthma. Yes, and uh, I think we are done with tea for now. Okay. The other medicine is ginger. Entangawuzi. Entangawuzi. Mm -hmm. Entangawuzi. Mm -hmm. We have proven that one, it is very good for vomiting, nausea and vomiting. Okay. So, for example, pregnant women. In the, in the first three months, they suffer a lot from nausea and vomiting. And vomiting. Mm. Instead of going for a medicine which could actually harm the baby at that developmental stage, one can use tangawusi. But you need to get fresh tangawusi from the market, not these ones which have been powdered and put in the market because we don't know the process under which they go. Mm. And you don't want to risk a pregnant woman to that. But you can go to a market, buy tangawusi, crush it, make it in your tea, and you keep drinking. Especially if you drink it in the evening, you'll avoid waking up in the morning with the morning sickness. Okay. And also the people, when they travel, like in a vehicle, they develop nausea and vomiting, sickness. motion sickness. Mm. So if you know you're going to travel tomorrow, you can actually take a strong tea of tangawusi and it will prevent you from vomiting in the vehicle. As you move Even around. those who fly? Even those who fly. Yeah, it stops that. Mm. So it's a simple medicine which has been established and there are compounds which now we know actually work by antagonizing those substances that cause nausea and vomiting in human beings. Wow. Now, the other one is something which some people throw away. Mm. Pumpkin seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. seeds. And you'll be surprised. I know... I was still in the state in Uganda. In Suju, uh, in Suju, yes. Yeah, mm. in, in, in our language, I think we call it uh, 
Yeah. We also called it a suju, actually. It I think suju. we copped it from Buganda. <laughs> 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 yeah, so pumpkin seeds, um, especially very good for prostate hypertrophy, or what we some people call it prostate cancer, not at a stage of cancer. The early stage. The early stage. When the prostate gland gets S bigger. Exactly, when it mm. swells. Studies now have, have shown actually that uh, they did a study, some friends in Iran did a study, mm. in which they induced that gland to, en to be enlarged using a hormone, which is not a mm. And then afterwards, they treated the rats using pumpkin seeds. And then they, 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 they developed a control group they used, eh, finasteride, which is a drug for treating cancer, you know very mm. well. And actually, they found that after 36 days, the rate at which the, the, it shrank, the gland shrank, the prostate. yes, was mm. as good as finasteride. And we have pumpkin seeds in this country. A lot. A lot of it. Mm. But you don't have to wait to get enlarged the prostate. You can actually mm -hmm. get the pumpkin seeds, mm. dry it, crush it to powder, and whenever you take your food or your tea, you add it there mm. as a prevention for such a condition. Because Cancer has become a common condition in this country. So those are the three. I've actually seen it's becoming a delicacy because you find people roast them mm. and eat them like peanuts, like mm. brown nuts. Mm. Is that the way they should be eaten? I would want to avoid roasting e. because the major compound in it, mm. which actually useful for cancer, is the oil. Now, whenever you subject oils to higher temperatures, they get converted mm. from unsaturated form to saturated form, mm -hmm. which is not good for the body. So it's better to dry it fresh, mm. crush it to powder, and then take it when it's fresh, yeah, as opposed to roasting. So you dry it, you crush, crush it, it powder, and then, then you, you, you eat just it you, eat it you can add to food, you can add to tea. Okay. Yes, in that natural, in that raw form. Well, for some of you who have just joined in, we are discussing health here at uh, our health corner. We have Dr. Patrick Ogwang, who is a pharmacist, but with a lot of interest in uh, herbal medicines, herbal remedies. He's doing research on a number of herbs to treat malaria, to prevent a number of diseases. And at a short time to come, we'll ask you to be part of this program to make sure that we get your ideas, your comments, but all this will do after this break. <laughs> 